Hello friends, welcome back to Stories with Pastor Macy and Wesley. It is our next to last story for the month of December, story number 24. And today we are reading The Crippled Lamb by Max Lucado, illustrated by Liz Bonham. So here we go. Are you ready to read, Wes? Once upon a time, in a sunny valley, there lived a little lamb named Joshua. He was white with black spots, black feet, and sad eyes. Josh felt sad when he saw the other lambs with snow white wool and no spots. He felt sad when he saw the other sheep with their moms and dads because he didn't have a mom or a dad. But he felt saddest when he saw the other lambs running and jumping because he couldn't. Josh had been born with one leg that didn't work right. He was crippled. He always limped when he walked. That's why he always watched while the other lambs ran and played. Josh felt sad and alone, except when Abigail was around. Abigail was Josh's best friend. She didn't look like a friend for a lamb. She was an old cow. She was brown and white with blotches that looked like rain puddles on a path. Her belly was as round as a barrel. Her voice was always kind and friendly. Some of Josh's favorite hours were passed with Abigail. They loved to pretend they were on adventures in distant lands. Josh liked to listen to Abigail tell stories about the stars. They would spend hours on the hill looking out into the valley. They were good friends. But even with a friend like Abigail, Josh still got sad. It made him sad to be the only lamb who could not run and jump and play in the grass. That's when Abigail would turn to him and say, don't be sad, little Joshua. God has a special place for those of us who feel left out. Josh wanted to believe her, but it was hard. Some days he just felt alone. He really felt alone the day the shepherds decided to take the lambs to the next valley where there was more grass. The sheep had been in this valley so long that the ground was nearly bare. All the sheep were excited when the shepherd told them they we're going to a new meadow. As they prepared to leave, Josh hobbled over and took his place at the edge of the group. But the others started laughing at him. You're too slow to go all the way to the next valley. Go back, slow poke. We'll never get there if we have to wait on you. Go back, Josh. That's when Josh looked up and saw the shepherd standing in front of him. They're right, my little Joshua, you better go back. This trip is too long for you. Go spend the night in the stable. Josh looked at the shepherd for a long time. Then he turned and began limping away. When Josh got to the top of the hill, he looked down and saw all the other sheep headed toward the green grass. Never before had he felt so left out. A big tear slipped out of his eye, rolled down his nose, and fell on a rock. Just then he heard Abigail come up behind him. And Abigail said what she always said when Josh felt sad. Don't be sad, little Joshua. Moo. God has a special place for those who feel left out. Slowly, the two friends turned and walked back to the stable together. By the time they got back to the little barn, the sun was setting like a big orange ball. Josh and Abigail went inside and began to eat some of the hay out of the feed box. They were very hungry and the hay tasted very good. For a little while, Joshua forgot that he had been left behind. Go to sleep, little friend, Abigail said when they finished eating. 
you have had a hard day. Josh was tired, so he lay down in the corner on some straw and closed his eyes. He felt Abigail lay down beside him, and he was glad to have a good friend like Abigail. Soon, Josh was asleep. At first, he slept soundly, curled up against Abigail's back. In his sleep, he dreamed. He dreamed of running and jumping like other sheep. He dreamed of long walks with Abigail and through the valley. He dreamed of being in a place where he never felt left out. Suddenly, a strange sound woke him up. Abigail, Abigail, he whispered, wake up, I'm scared. Abigail lifted her big head and looked around. The stable was dark except for a small lamp hanging on the wall. Somebody is in here, Josh whispered. They looked across the dimly lit stable. There, lying on some fresh hay in the feed box, was a baby. A young woman was resting on a big pile of hay beside the feed box. Joshua looked at Abigail, thinking his friend could tell him what was going on. But Abigail was just as surprised as Joshua. Josh looked again at the woman and the child, then limped across the stable. He stopped next to the mother and looked into the baby's face. The baby was crying. He was cold. The woman picked up the baby and put him on the hay next to her. Josh looked around the stable for something to keep the baby warm. Usually there were blankets, but not tonight. The shepherds had taken all the blankets on their trip across the valley. Then Josh remembered his own soft, warm wool. Timidly, he walked over and curled up next to the baby. Thank you, little lamb, the baby's mother said softly. Soon the little child stopped crying and went back to sleep. About that time, a man entered the stable carrying some rags. I'm sorry, Mary, he explained. This is all the cover I could find. It's okay, she answered. This little lamb has kept the new king warm. A king? Joshua looked at the baby and wondered who he might be. His name is Jesus. Mary spoke as if she knew Josh's question. God's son, he came from heaven to teach us about God. Just then there was another noise at the door. It was the shepherds. The very ones who had left Joshua behind. Their eyes were big and they were excited. We saw a bright light and heard the angels, they began. Then they saw Joshua next to the baby. Joshua, do you know who this baby is? He does now. It was the young mother who was speaking. She looked at Joshua and smiled. God has heard your prayers, little lamb. This little baby is your answer. Joshua looked down at the baby. Somehow he knew that this was a special child and this was a special moment. He also understood why he had been born with a crippled leg. Had he been like the other sheep, he would have been away in the valley. But since he was different, he was in the stable, among the first to welcome Jesus into the world. He turned and walked back to Abigail and took his place beside his friend. You were right, he told her. God does have a special place for me. The end. I hope that you know that God has created you for a special purpose and that he has a place for you in mind. That's always true, but it is especially true if you are feeling alone and lonesome this Christmas season. I hope that you are having an okay day. And uh, if you need some fellowship, some people so that you feel less alone, we would love to have you join us for breakfast and a church service at Tabernacle tomorrow morning. Breakfast is at 945 and our church service begins at 1045. We hope you have a wonderful Merry Christmas Eve. And we will see you again for our last Christmas story tomorrow. Happy Friday. Merry Christmas.